Hey there, today we're talking macro photography. What is macro photography? Well, for those of you that don't know, it's a technique for taking uh, images of really small objects and making them appear life size or greater. Um, essentially, you're just making small things look really, really big. So what does life size mean in this context? Well, it means that your camera sensor and the subject you're taking are going to be the same size or the subject will be smaller than the sensor. Uh, this is what will give you a one-to-one -one ratio. And an example of what would be a one-to-one -one ratio in this uh, circumstance would be if you had a one-inch sensor and a one-inch object, that's one-to-one. -one. So a one-to-one -one ratio means one times magnification. You can have more than one times magnification or you can have less. Um, that's usually represented by a one a colon and a one for one times magnification. All of these macro lenses you see in front of me are all one-to-one -one magnifications because uh, they're all true macros. You can also go up to higher magnifications. So some macro lenses have a two-to-one ratio or a even up to a five-to-one ratio. So five times magnification. That's a lot of magnification, honestly. So just imagine how close you can get in on a subject. There's a lot of opportunities for five-time macro being really impressive. However, it does have its downsides in that your depth of field shrinks dramatically dramatically. Um, so even at a high aperture like f16 or f22, there's almost no way you're going to get the whole image into focus. And additionally to that, you're also going to reveal more of your background. There are lots of lenses that let you do close focusing, but they don't quite compare to a macro and they don't give you the same characteristics as what a macro would give you. Depending on what type of macro photography you're doing, you might not need to get everything in focus. For me personally, uh, I like to walk around with a macro lens and try to see what I can get sometimes. It's too much of a hassle to bring a tripod with me. However, if you do, I would recommend using the technique of focus stacking. What is focus stacking? Well, it is the technique of taking potentially hundreds of photos at different focus points and adding them all together in post to make that perfectly clear image. So as you can see, focus stacking is a really powerful tool and there's at least two ways of going about it. You can either focus the lens with the actual lens or you can go into the camera settings like on the Z7 and you can choose the focus stacking option and that allows you to choose your interval, your silent shooting mode, how many photos you want it to take and a, a few more parameters and in my opinion this is a really really great way of saving a ton of time on your shoot because you're not having to manually select each minute little bit of detail. You can decide how far each focus point is based on each photo that you're taking so you can create a really really sharp focus stack. So what do you do with all those images once you've taken them? Well you're gonna have to bring them into the computer and combine them in a program like Adobe Photoshop or Helicon. Uh, those are both programs which can combine all of your images into one. Kind of like a panorama only it's the reverse scale whereas a panorama typically happens on a landscape. Macro is obviously not a landscape it's super close up so it, it's essentially just the same in the fact that you're stitching images together. Um, those aren't the only two programs you can use to do this, however, there's a myriad of different programs whether they be paid or free. It's up to you to figure out which one you'd like, but in my experience I've used both of these and they work quite well. Knowing exactly how many photos to take to get your focus stack is something that will come in time. Like everything, practice makes perfect. So getting started with macro, there's only three things you absolutely need to get started, and that would be the camera itself, a macro lens, and a card to record your images on. And of course a battery, so I guess four things. However, if you get a couple extra items like a sturdy photo tripod, uh, or a manual shutter release that comes on a cable or a digital one, uh, that will greatly help you reduce any sort of camera shake that would come into your photos. So because tripods are so important in getting a perfectly sharp image, your type of tripod actually does matter. Uh, I would suggest getting one that's of medium weight and that has a neck that can extend and turn horizontal so you can get directly over top of your image. Um, pretty much any tripod honestly is going to be alright for macro photography, but if you have one that can extend its riser and have it turn horizontal so you can stick the camera right above whatever object that you're taking, it's going to make a massive difference to your usability and how you end up doing things on set. 
for me, it depends on which situation I'm in for what tripod I choose. If I'm outdoors shooting, I'll tend to take a lighter tripod because I don't want to, you know, break my back with all the other equipment that I'm going to be taking. However, if I'm in studio, I will definitely use a sturdier tripod because that's going to mean less potential shake within the camera, whether it be from the shutter or from me accidentally knocking the tripod. Either way, no matter whether you're in studio or on location, just make sure that your tripod has that feature where the net can extend fully, pop out, and turn horizontally. Allowing your camera to look straight down at your subject is a game changer for macro photography. In addition to a tripod, I would also highly recommend getting a speed light or any a strong source of continuous light. If you're going to be shooting outside, you definitely do need more light than you would assume because uh, you're going to be battling against the sun. In all honesty, any camera can really become a good macro camera. It's more about what lens you choose. Having said that, using larger sensors for macro photography isn't always the best option. Sometimes smaller is better. The larger the sensor that you have, the more of your image will be out of focus at any given time. So you may have to do more photos in a stack to actually be able to get the same result. In addition to that, you may have to reframe your image in post because you're not actually able to get in as tight with a larger sensor camera than you are with, say, an APS-C or a Micro Four Thirds. For macro, I've been really enjoying using the APS-C function in my camera over here. It allows me to just get that much closer without really losing any quality uh, in the image and I don't have to reframe my images in post. Um, I can keep the same distance from my subject but not have to reframe. So in my opinion it's a really great option. It's basically like having two cameras in one. Even though there are a lot of lenses that allow you to focus really closely to an object, they just don't compare to a macro lens. One of the major factors for that is the working distance. A normal lens does not have the same working distance as a macro lens does. So knowing the working distance of your lens is really important. And working distance is the distance from your subject to where your lens can keep that subject in focus. When you work at a one-to-one -one ratio, the smaller the focal length, the closer you have to be to your subject. So for instance, if you're using a 60 millimeter macro, you have to be much closer to your subject than you would be if you're using a 180 millimeter macro. And that's most likely due to the fact that one is a standard size lens at a 60 versus telephoto. So moving on from the equipment that you're gonna use, you also need to consider where you're gonna be shooting, whether that be outdoors or in the studio. So when in studio, you do have full control, but you also have to bring everything there with you and you have to set it all up and then you have to take it all away at the end of the day. On location, you might not have to do that. If, depending on what you're shooting, you might just get to use the sun, which is free. So it could be way less expensive for you if you just want to use the sun to light your photos. Uh, it just depends on what time of day and where you're going to shoot. You, that's kind of the beauty of going on location. You get to explore where you're going to go around and you're not stuck in one place. So as you can see, both options have their pros and cons. I don't think either one is actually better than the other, it's just it depends on what you're trying to make. I would just say that you need to have patience when you're doing macro photography. It is not a fast-paced kind of uh, photography, uh, especially because it takes multiple images of the same thing and then putting them together in post. It's not just a click and then edit kind of thing. It's a click, 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 and then edit a bunch of things together and then you can actually do the coloring and tweaking, dodging, burning kind of thing. It's, it's a bit more of a process than doing your typical photo. So some last things that I would suggest to really help with your macro photography would be a lens brush kit, a lens blower like what you see in front of me, a spray bottle, that, a very small one that can spray mist upon your subject. It would help create a dew effect on flowers or other objects. And uh, if you're working with less delicate objects, I would definitely recommend uh, compressed air in a can. That will just help you out greatly. Well, there you have it. There's my introduction to the big, small world of macro photography. Honestly, seeing the world from this perspective has always been one of my favorite things about photography. Uh, getting to make such small objects larger than life and seeing all their detail is really interesting. Um, so if you've never done it, please take this as an opportunity to get involved with uh, doing macro photography. Um, whether you want to try getting into it for professional reasons or you just uh, are a hobbyist, it's really, really cool to get to see the world from this perspective. And if uh, you're looking to rent or purchase any of the things you see in front of me or you've seen in this video, please go to viztech.ca to check out everything that we sell. Well, I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.